During week 17, the Bib broadcast an archive of the Eurotunnel 25th anniversary. That resulted in me looking at some old footage of my first road trip through it in 1998. Not my first ever journey through it, which was a train journey from Bruxelles Midi to London in 1996. It was shot on an old mini DV camera, and eventually a DVD of it was made on obsolete kit. The original tape archive has been recovered here. Monday the 7th of September, now I'm going to set off to northern France, so let's see how far we get. Well, made it to the tunnel, took a little bit more than three hours due to some minor delays along the way. Next train is not until 13.21, so I'll have to hang around here and have a wander around a bit, I think. With all these delays, great buying opportunities, don't they? This is the car park waiting to board the shuttle on the train, waiting to depart. This is Le Tripor. Still a working port with some fishing going on. There's the entrance to the harbour with the lighthouse. Cathedral up on the cliff there. Tall white cliffs, very like the other side of the channel there really. This is my room for the night in the Hotel Residence. It's quite a big room actually, uh, two double beds shower room and even a little kitchen so it's more like a mini apartment than a ordinary room 220 francs that's the outside of the hotel parking in the streets the norm around here another view of the uh, key where all the activity is That's another way of uh, getting money off you, casino. The whole place has a bit of an end of the season flavour to it though. Broad Shingle Beach. That's uh, a bit of an abomination architecturally. Facing the seafront. Cross up on the cliff. Now these people are picking something off the rocks, shellfish presumably. And still more arriving with their buckets. That's a look across towards Ur. That's the cathedral again. It was closed so I couldn't have a look inside. Some of the back street architecture. Later on after dinner I walked up the cliff and that's that cross again, all lit up. Of course now I'm up here on the top of the hill. A heavy shower of rain's opened up. I hope it is just a shower anyway. Well, it's drowned rat time. Uh, quick dash back to the hotel and it's still raining very hard as you can probably hear. Day two and it's brighter again. Rather cool and fresh. Now I arrived in Fécon where it would be nice to have a walk around but when you look outside you might get the idea that I'm not too enthusiastic about it in that sort of rain. I guess it's a case of seeing whether it stops and if not to uh, hit the road again. This is an enfleur. Bien Normand. Nice little spot on fleur. Fortunately the rain stopped from time to time so I could get around and take some photographs. Not really a working port anymore. It's an old carousel. It 
It's uh, at the mouth of the Seine, opposite Le Havre. This is the old quay. Probably uh, at the seafront at one time before it all silted up with the uh, stuff coming down the river. Very popular now with artists. Lots of uh, shops selling paintings of all sorts. Closed on Tuesdays, unfortunately. Another religious building of some sort, I think. Quite an old one. Popular with the yachting fraternity. Yachts of all sizes. A little light snack for lunch. And another look at the old key. Now we're at uh, one of the war cemeteries, of which there are many in this area. This one's a British one. Over 2,000 buried here. Now this is Santo Bain-sur-Mer on one of the uh, beaches on the north coast. You have to imagine the uh, troops uh, landing on the be these beaches and storming up the beaches towards the town. There's an old gun emplacement, German one presumably. Now this is an arrow manche, Musée de Débarquement. This is a place where there still remains of one of the old Mulberry Harbours. The Americans were heavily involved in, on this part of the coast, it's one of their beaches. Aramanche itself is quite a pleasant little spot. And now all the tour buses have disappeared, it's a bit quieter. It was chaotic when they first arrived. Anyway, I moved on then to Bayeux. This is in Bayeux, looking for somewhere to stay. Well, made it. Uh, this is the room. It'll do for the night. Let's see what rubbish they've got on their TV then. This hotel is called the Notre Dame and it's bang opposite the road from the cathedral, which we might have a look at later. View of the outside of the hotel, inside the cathedral. No electric candles here, all real ones. The outside's worth another look in this light. This is obviously the best time of day to see it.
by a cathedral again from the other side. And there was water in there also. I'll have a look at that tomorrow. It's a lot quieter now. Later in the evening. This square was absolutely packed uh, earlier on, but it was rush hour when I first arrived. It's still quite common to see bakers open all hours. Wednesday, day three, bright and sunny again, and I'm off to have a look at the Bayer Tapestry. Called the Tapisserie de Lorraine Metal in French. Having visited the Bayer Tapestry, which was very interesting, it's time to hit the road again, and I'm gonna head west towards saint Lô and see how far I can get down that way. After a rather stormy journey down, I've arrived at the Bay Mont Saint-Michel. There's the Mont Saint-Michel across the water. This is a car park at the bottom of the causeway that floods at high tide. And you have to walk the rest of the way. Two of buses get to park a bit closer. Once inside the walls there are lots of shops and uh, even some hotels as well as the abbey. Even a post office. And it's a steep climb up to the top, to the abbey. There's a view back towards the mainland. There's a little cemetery inside. And yet more steps to go. Up to there. Plenty of opportunities to spend your money in here. Quite a lot of uh, Japanese or Chinese tourists here. Another view back. Well, it's good to be back in the car out of that strong wind. Last look at the Mont Saint Michel, and I'll head back northeast. I've arrived in Lisieux. Uh, found a room through a tourist office. Smallest but most expensive so far. So that's the way it goes sometimes. But at least it's it's alright for a night. Lisieux uh, survives on the Saint Teresa industry, I think. That's the cathedral uh, on the Place François Mitterrand. Now he's dead, he's getting uh, things named after him. Another shot of the cathedral in the sun this time. Most of these years is post-war because it was blown away in the invasion of 1944. I think the cathedral is probably the only really old building there. That's the Basilica for St. Teresa. <coughs> we'll look at the cathedral. But there's lots of architecture like that. Rather less like this. So that's Lisieux, basically. Thursday morning, again the weather not too promising. Today should be shopping day and I'll probably end up back home later on. This is an Abdeal in Picardy short stop here. That's the Somme. Now uh, waiting to board the tunnel, the shuttle at the Channel Tunnel entrance. It's very busy, so I'm going to have to wait about an hour or so. That's what it's all about though. About a hundred quid's worth of booze in there. Listening to the radio and waiting to depart. You see how quickly those clouds are moving. Rough weather is good for business, so shares might go up. On the safety and control, please remain in your vehicle until the 
from the southern trip to us to a close. We are committing for the end will be a big soon. We would like to introduce ourselves to our city, Zatam Chambor, as it interferes with our fire emission system.